The other day I was scrolling through science news when I saw a paper published in the journal Nature that suggested that the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, which is a system of ocean currents in the Atlantic Ocean that bring warmer water north and cooler water south, is on the brink of collapse, which may happen as soon as 2025. That is quite alarming news, so I was concerned. But imagine my surprise when mere moments later, I happened across an article in The Guardian stating that the Gulf Stream is also on the brink of collapse, and that also might happen as soon as 2025. Holy shit, that year is gonna suck. Okay, well, no, The Guardian just managed to get this hilariously wrong, as did a number of other news outlets, even though this is pretty basic information. Stay with me. The Gulf Stream is a very large system of currents driven by wind and the rotation of the planet. It's not going to stop unless those things stop. So yes, if the Earth stops turning, the Gulf Stream will collapse, and that'll be pretty bad, but I feel like we'll also have other things to worry about in that case. Jonathan Foley of Project Drawdown explains the difference between the two systems like this. If the Gulf Stream is a superhighway, then the Atlantic Drift is an exit off of that superhighway, which leads to a small road that is the AMOC. AMOC is much slower and much deeper than the Gulf Stream. I assume news outlets ran with the Gulf Stream anyway because people have heard of that and no one's heard of the AMOC, unless you're one of the many scientists who have been studying it for years, particularly its importance to climate change. Researchers have been directly observing the AMOC since 2004 when they deployed a series of instruments to measure conditions on the seafloor from Morocco all the way to Florida as part of the RAPID program. Scientists combined those direct observations with longer term indirect observations to try to figure out what the AMOC has been up to in the past and what it might get up to in the future. This new study is based on those indirect measures, particularly sea surface temperatures, which is data that we have going all the way back to the mid 19th century. These measures are by definition overly simplistic, but they're important because researchers need every scrap of data they can get to figure out the larger puzzle of what's going on. That indirect data has led to a lot of interesting past research, as Stefan Romsdorf describes over on his site, realclimate.org. The preponderance of evidence suggests that the AMOC has been weakening over the past century and that that has been caused by human activity. It also suggests this data, that it's always been super unstable and that that instability is connected to some pretty severe past climate events. Like, I don't know, have you heard about the most recent ice age? So yeah, it's a pretty big deal for humans if it suddenly comes to a halt. I barely survived the most recent Northern California winter when it dipped down to the 40s. I cannot handle an ice age, I assure you. So should this new study about the AMOC collapsing make you worry? Well, I mean, kind of, in the same way that every new study showing how bad climate change is going to be should make you worry, but you should only really worry to a point. Like at some point you should reach peak worried, and then you should just channel all of those feelings into agitating for change but the AMOC probably will not collapse in 2025. This study actually put it in a window from 2025 to 2095 with a critical mean year of 2057. But again, this is not based on direct measurements because we only have those going back to 2004. As Dr. Eleanor Freika Williams pointed out, the recent IPCC report found medium confidence that the AMOC will not collapse before 2100. However, many climatologists, including Romsdorf, think that that's too conservative. And of course, you know, that's how science works. Experts agree on an overall consensus, like 
the AMOC is weakening and that's because of human activity. And if it collapses, it's going to be bad. But they disagree on the details while they gather more data. And that's like, when exactly is it going to collapse? And what will the knock-on effects be of this collapse? All of this beautifully illustrates a topic I discussed last month when the mainstream media blamed scientists for rising sea levels due to their poor communication. That was based on an actually good study that simply found better ways for scientists to communicate complicated ideas. That study found that it's very, very difficult and yet very, very important for scientists and science communicators to properly discuss ambiguous findings when talking to the general public. That study used the example of sea levels rising, pointing out that while the rapid disintegration of the West Antarctic ice sheet was unlikely in the next century, it is one of many unlikely events that, if any of them were to come to pass, would have a devastating effect on humankind, and so it's probably worth trying to avoid anyway. Now we have another great example. Current data suggests it's unlikely that the AMOC will collapse in 2025, or maybe even before 2050. But if we don't change what we're doing right now, then the chance that it will happen is going to continue to grow, and it is vitally important we not let that happen. I think that the authors of this Nature paper effectively communicated their findings, and I think that the scientists who I've read on this topic, like those I've mentioned here, have also done a great job communicating those findings to the general public. It's a shame, then, that the mainstream science news reporters can't even be bothered to get the name of the currents right, let alone put these findings into perspective. Like, it's bad enough to downplay the climate catastrophe, but it's almost as bad to make people panic to the point that they think that there's nothing we can do and that we should just give up. Don't panic. There is something we can do. We can stop this from happening. Don't, you know, take your worry to the next level where you just curl into the fetal position and die. Instead, use that concern to stoke your passion and get out there and agitate for change. Agitate for our billionaires to start caring about what's happening and make a change. Indy. Indy, come. You can't go to the baseball game. <gasps> Daddy has cheese. Look, he's got cheese, Indy. Indy, Indy, come. Come, come, Indy. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have no. a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.